Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan and this is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, we'll be carrying on our series of tutorials on the FlySimware Legion 35A and we'll be covering the aircraft pressurization system and air conditioning. So we're in the cockpit with the aircraft powered on and the GPU connected. From the pilot's perspective, the pressurization controls of the aircraft are controlled from the pressurization control module, which is located on the lower co-pilot side. We'll just zoom in to have a look at that. And this is the pressurization module here. We'll just go through each of the switches and dials in turn and explain what they mean. First of all, we have an automatic and manual switch, as we can see that is in op, but the aircraft is in normal operation, always in the auto position, and it's a fully automated pressurization control, and you would only place it into the manual setting in uh, an abnormal situation where you needed to take direct control of the pressurization. And linked to that is this switch here, which with the red knob on it, with a guard on it, which is the up down switch, also known as the cherry picker. And that allows you to uh, take direct control of the main valve, uh, controlling the flow of uh, air into the cabin. Speaking of which, uh, then we have the cabin air switch, which is an on off position. Uh, that is important and that. Uh, opening that allows uh, regulated bleed air from the engines which is passed through a manifold to be regulated so it's not just coming straight from the engines uh, it's been cooled beforehand um, and that uh, it needs to be in the on position to allow bleed air to enter the aircraft and the aircraft will not pressurize unless that is set to on we have the then increase and reduce knob that allows you to set the the rate at which the cabin will pressurize uh, but that is only functional when the aircraft is in manual pressurization mode from control from this switch here but uh, given that that is not modeled uh, this is equally not modeled then we have the cabin controller and this is an important dial i'll zoom in as far as we can and you can see that there are is a central knob that you use to adjust it and then there are two scales the first represents the cabin altitude and the second is the aircraft altitude and so say you're going to be cruising at uh, 40,000 feet uh, before takeoff uh, you would set this to 40 on the lower scale and maybe a touch higher um, and that tells us that uh, it will pressurize the cabin to an altitude of 5600 feet and equally when you're descending before you begin the descent this needs to be positioned to the airfield elevation so if you're going to be use the lower scale for the ascent and the upper scale for setting it for the descent some indicators here this is the cabin altitude and differential pressure indicator so the big needle on the outer scale uh, will tell you what the current cabin altitude is and that never wants to be above never wants to be above 9000 and in fact if it goes above 9000 then you will get an alert the small needle on the inner scale is the differential pressure, so the difference in pressure between the inside and the outside. And as it's a pressurized aircraft, that always wants to be higher than the outside pressure. We have a cabin vertical speed indicator here, and that will show you the rate at which the cabin is pressurizing or depressurizing, and that is controlled automatically uh, in real life. It will normally in auto mode it will normally at normal rates of climb it will be around about 600 feet per minute and I think it's set to 500 feet per minute in this aircraft. So I've already mentioned that if the 
it's an automated system on the whole you do need to also in addition to having the these controls on the pressurization control manual uh, you the other vital is uh, two switches here are the left and right bleed air switches which will open the valves and allow bleed air to come from the engine and they're normally positioned in the on position and they should remain in the on position however if you accidentally click them off um, then you you may well have a problem you may get an alert so that's something you need to check and they also have the emergency position and if for any reason normally because you've failed to put the cabin air switch on that the cabin isn't pressurizing and it gets above nine and a half thousand i think it's nine and a half thousand it may be a bit lower than that in this model you'll get a cabin altitude alert sound will start to play and you'll also get on the enunciator panel here you can see just beside the wing overheat red light and uh, the generator lights on the lower row you've got a cabin alt amber warning and you'll also get sound will play which we can also t you can hear on the test dial here you've got cabin alt so if we press the test switch so if you start getting that sound and you don't know what it is well that's because you haven't set the cabin air on and what should you do if that starts to happen well you should stop climbing straight away you should switch the cabin air on and i believe it should automatically place the the bleed air valves into the emergency position i don't know if that's been modeled in this aircraft or not so you can manually set the bleed air into the emergency position as well and that will start to dump unregulated hot engine air straight into the cabin which will rapidly increase the pressure but it will also rapidly increase the discomfort of your passengers and use the pilot as well so best not to find yourself in that situation during both the climb and the descent you should monitor particularly monitor the cabin altitude and make sure that that never becomes excessively high and that is everything that you need to know for cabin pressurization systems. Closely associated with the pressurization system is the air conditioning system for the aircraft that you use to achieve a good cabin and cockpit temperature. And the controls for that are just to the right of the pressurization module. So we have uh, a number of dials and controls here we have the auto and manual control uh, a hot and cold rheostat here a cool off and fan three position switch which is used to control the air conditioning and there is an auxiliary heating system here too as well which is used to provide hot air over here we have a temperature comp dial and that indicates the position of the h valve uh, which is the valve that mixes cold air and hot air hot bleed air from the engines to achieve the desired temperature it's not actually measuring cabin temperature itself there is no dial or indicator to show what the cabin temperature is but this shows the position of the valve the system relies on bleed air coming from the engine and it also relies on ram air coming in through the dorsal fin ram air intake which we can see here and what happens is that the aircraft uh, will scoop in cold ram air and that will go into a heat exchanger where it'll be mixed with a certain proportion of hot bleed air from the engine and then a certain amount of the hot bleed air will be unmixed and the two will depending on the position of the H valve and then the two will be mixed again and ducted into the cockpit and cabin if the control here is an auto that will be all done automatically by the aircraft if it's in manual then you can use the uh, rheostat here to set the desired position and that will be if we just adjust it here we can see that the needle here changes now 
doesn't seem to make a difference whether it's an auto or manual and unlike the FSR 500 there's no interaction with the passengers complaining whether they feel hot or cold so uh, how whether you want to use this or not is up to you the air conditioning system controlled by the switch here it can't be operated when on battery power alone you need either a gpu or an engine running in its three positions fan will just be recirculation of the air that is in the cabin but when you place it into cool that will engage the you know, it's a normal air conditioning system that will engage the air conditioning unit and start to produce cold air and if you're on the ground somewhere very hot for extended periods you might require the gpu to be connected and to run the air conditioning the main outlet for the air conditioner unit for the cabin is through this grill here and there are outlets in the cockpit as well for the flight deck none of this will work unless the cab air switches in the on position and that is what opens the valve that allows bleed engine air to enter into the cabin shared with the pressurization system and that should not be positioned in the on when conducting extended ground operations with the engines running and the reason for that is that to regulate the temperature is as we've already said requires the ram air intake on the dorsal fin to be scooping in cold air and if you're sitting on the ground not moving there is no air cold air coming in through that ram air intake and you'll just get hot bleed air engine uh, coming into the cabin and that may cause damage to the systems and be uncomfortably warm I'll just finally quickly mention two points I haven't already. The aircraft is already also equipped with an auxiliary heating system that you can use to provide heat that doesn't rely on hot engine bleed air. It uses electrical heating elements positioned next to the blowers. It has a very heavy drain, uh, so it can only be operated when the engines are running and you've got generator power or a GPU connected. It isn't uh, operable in this model. And you'll also notice that there is a dial here, a rheostat on the co pilot sidewall called cop air, and that simply controls the volume of air being uh, introduced into the cockpit when the blowers are on. That also isn't presently modelled in the aircraft. Next to the oxygen masks, on both the pilot and co-pilot sidewall you'll also see a little switch heat off fan now i'm not 100 percent certain what that switch is for i'm assuming uh, that will control for the blowers that are just positioned just beneath them that will determine if the auxiliary heating system is on whether hot air is going to come out or whether it's just going to uh, circulate if it's on the fan position it's just going to circulate the uh, ambient temperature in the cockpit and you can see there's another one on this side as well neither of them are modeled that concludes everything in this tutorial for the aircraft pressurization and air conditioning systems do make sure to watch the other videos in this tutorial series uh, covering the aircraft systems and if you found it useful, do please hit like and subscribe. Any questions, leave a comment and look forward to seeing you at the next video.